Hey, I'm John Q and I'm here at my off-grid property and we've got two different power setups here. I see a lot of questions about what kind of solar setup to get. Hopefully today we demystify that a bit and kind of simplify it for you. Let me just show you how we use some of these at our property. We've got a sauna with one of these batteries hardwired and this powers LED lights and charges some things and also powers a lake pump to fill our off-grid hot tub. We have another hardwired solution in our outhouse and it's got lights and a fan for the uh, composting toilet. And in the tent, we use a portable one. I mean, the tent is portable, so we figured a portable solution kind of makes sense there. It charges our phones and laptops as well as powers an RV fridge. And in the colder months, it powers a diesel heater all night while we're sleeping. Let's go over what we have in each one of these solutions. And I'll go over the pricing a bit too. Note, everything is in Canadian dollars, so Keep that in mind. We've got a 90 amp hour deep cycle lead acid battery. It's cheap and easy, and this is about $200. Solar panel is about $140, 100 watt Bouge RV solar panel. Solar charge controller, which is a, around $200. You can do a bit more, a bit less. And then a power inverter, a good one is about 180 bucks for a sine wave one. This one's a cheap, like $40 one. And then you'll need some cables too, and that can be anywhere from you know 40 to $100, depending on how that goes. And over here, we've got the Bouge RV 1100 watt hour power station. And this is an all-in-one. So it's got the inverter built in, a bunch of different inputs, and the charge controller all in one box. And this is about 1100 Canadian plus a you know $140 solar panel. So this one definitely comes in a bit higher. It's about $1,200, but it's simpler to install. That's for sure. So let's go over some of the pros and cons of these two solutions. For the power station, it's all in one. So you've got AC output, so you can plug in regular household items. You've got your solar input, so there's no like wiring, a charge controller, or anything like that. Um, you can charge it from your car or your home as well. It's got USB inputs, USB-C, and, and uh, regular like DC 12 volt outputs, like a cigarette lighter. And because it's portable, we've had some instances where we've used the battery a ton and it's been like rainy days and we couldn't quite make up the power with the solar panel because of the cloud cover. So we just brought it over to somewhere where there's AC and we just plugged it in and charged it in a couple hours and then we were able to use it again. We've also been able to take this with us to the city and help somebody out who had a power outage and they were able to power their fridge and save all their food while the power was out for a couple days. The biggest perk is it requires like less knowledge or there's like a, you know, less of a barrier to entry with something like this. It's just you buy it and you plug it in and you go. There are some limitations. You're kind of limited to whatever the specs are of this. Whereas with the hardwired solution, you can kind of design it how you need it. Now for the hardwired solution, other than the slightly cheaper cost, I think the biggest benefit to us anyways, is that it's hardwired. So you can like wire it basically like you would any like household items. So we have it running LED lights in both our outhouse and our sauna, and they're just wired in with like light switches. We, wire, we actually wired both buildings with conventional house wiring so that we could convert them to, to AC if we ever do get services out here. And then like you walk into the building and you just flick a light switch and the lights turn on. So everything feels like it's, you know, a serviced property, but it's really just running off 12 volts and it's low voltage lighting. So we've been using those same wires with just like low voltage lights and these hardwired setups. Like the lake pump is hardwired in and that just has a little button that you flick and then it fills the hot tub. Some of the cons though are you need, you know, a little bit of electrical knowledge for wiring things up, um, you know, selecting the right gauge of wire. And these lead acid batteries are, are pretty cheap compared to a battery like this, but they're also pretty sensitive to being discharged. So on paper, these two batteries have roughly the same watt hours, but this one you should really only draw down to around 50%. So I said, like I said originally that this solution is cheaper than that, but if you were to really match the available capacity of this solution to this solution, you'd have to add batteries and that would bring it a lot closer in price. So it's, uh, it's not necessarily cheaper. Another perk that's not really thought about is this is good for stuff that's always powered on. Some of these inputs have buttons to turn them on and off. So if you were to deplete this battery one day with the device plugged in and then the battery turned off and then you charge it up again, the inputs wouldn't necessarily, the outputs, sorry, wouldn't necessarily turn back on by themselves. Whereas something like this, you can hardwire it in and have those devices always on, like in our outhouse where the fan for the outhouse toilet is always on and is constantly plugged into the battery, rain or shine, it just works. If you were to ask me what, what the better solution is, they both have their place. Definitely get something like this if you want something simple um, and portable and easy to use. And if you're gonna go with something that's a bit more customizable or hardwired into a, like a cabin or something, this is also a great solution. 
Can you use this for a fixed, more permanent solution? Absolutely. Can you use this kind of portably? Uh, I mean, I guess you could carry this around. This is actually way heavier too, I didn't mention that. This lead acid battery is like four times the weight of this. And now we'll get into the biggest question people have about something like this. How much is enough battery to power the things I need? And that's a question people have a really hard time with, but I'm gonna hopefully show you how to really easily calculate that and get a good idea of how much capacity to battery you need to power the devices you need. There's a lot of confusion because there's so many different numbers like watts, amps, volts, watt hours, amp hours. I'm gonna try to simplify that for you. There's basically two things. There's power and then there's power over time. So power is often measured in watts and watts is just a makeup of volts and amps. And to get the power calculation, you just multiply the volts by the amps. Now, power over time is basically wattage over time. So this Bouge RV battery, I think is 1,150 watt hours. So that's how many watts over time. To find out how long a battery is going to power one of your devices, you need to take the watt hour rating of that battery and then divide that by the watts of your device. For example, a 100 watt light bulb, which doesn't really exist anymore, you know, like the old incandescent one, plugged into a 1000 watt hour power station can be powered for 10 hours because there's 10 times this 100 watts in hours in this station, if that makes sense. Here's a more useful scenario. I've got a laptop and I wanna know how many times I can charge this laptop on this battery. I looked it up, this is a 50 watt hour battery and this is a 1150 watt hour device. So you just bust out your calculator you type in 1150, which is the rating of this, and you divide that by the rating of your battery there, divided by 50, and that's 23 times. So you could charge this laptop 23 times from this battery. We have some 12 volt LED lights, which is kind of nice because you don't have to convert it to AC just to use them. You just plug them straight in. And they're, I think they're nine watts each. So you could calculate that. You could go 1150 divided by nine, 127 hours. Do that in days divided by 24 that's five days of running those lights non-stop and that's not even taking into account the solar panel now how do you size your solar panels for your need so to calculate how much solar you need you would you'd also need to calculate how much you draw in a day now the reality is you get some cloudy days and you also don't get perfect sun all day long so like five hours of direct sun is that's a good day but if you were to miss a couple days You'd wanna have enough solar panel to charge your battery and enough battery to last you a couple days. So you're kind of oversizing these two things. So if you're just powering like your, your device and your laptop and a few things like that, this is, this is almost overkill. You can get away with using this indefinitely, which we do, we just leave it here set up. Now we usually have 200 watts plugged into this just because we don't have a lot of, uh, of sun here. We have a lot of shade and we move the solar panels around. Some of these power stations too, um, the companies make it easier to calculate if the battery is gonna be enough. Like on the website, this will tell you how many hours you can, you can power certain devices with it. We actually power a fridge with this. Um, we have a Bouge RV, RV fridge that's plugged in like basically 24 seven. And between the battery and two 100 watt solar panels, we have 200 watts. The battery and the solar panels are more than enough to, uh, to power that you know, fridge freezer combo. And it's been like really awesome. We also have this exact same setup basically in our sauna and we have a little solar panel sitting on a rock somewhere. And the biggest draw is that pump. Pumps are, you know, like water pumps are a pretty large draw. And, you know, we fill the tub in about 40 minutes. Um, we just flick a switch, the pump turns on, set it and forget it. Once it's filled, it stops automatically. And then, uh, you know, like half an hour later, the battery's at 100% again with that solar panel. These solutions, you know, they can be really simple. They can be a bit more complex, but a bit more like polished. And they can be, you know, they're not cheap. They, we spent some real money on these things, but it's a lot cheaper than connecting to service out here. And this is like perfect for our needs right now. Solar is amazing. It's like free power. Like we've lost power in the city and, and it's been like a, kind of a big inconvenience when you're like your city home and you lose power. And we think about being at the lake, we're like, we'd be better off at the lake right now uh, with like our handful of solar panels and batteries. But kind of a weird thought. Hopefully that simplified things a little bit and didn't make things more confusing. If you have any questions, uh, definitely ask me in the comments and hopefully I can you know clear things up a bit. I'll also link 
to uh, kind of a full setup like this and a setup like this, um, so you can compare them and and if you want, you can like pick up some of the things that I've that I've found to be really useful to me and that have been like kind of a workhorse for us. So uh, yeah.